Hey everyone, my name is Miguel and today I'll be showing you guys some basic navigation for Maya. So today's agenda would be number one, we'll be going for the navigation. So showing you guys how to navigate around Maya, uh, how to extrude the cube and all that things, that the most basic things that would be in navigation. Second, we'll be showing you guys some selection tricks that will make your workflow a lot faster when it comes to face selections and just in general make your 3D modeling selection a little bit more faster. Third, we'll be going through extrusion tricks and the three ways that you could also do extrusion and possibly get creative in how you guys approach your 3D models and some methods and tips and tricks. Alright, let's begin. So, navigation. Let's go to navigation. It's the most important thing in Maya for new users. So for, uh, for navigation, we always want to know how do we control the Maya, Maya itself. So Maya relies a lot on pressing Alt and your left mouse button. So if you do that, uh, my, uh, Alt and left mouse button, what it does is we can actually rotate around Maya using combining out and your left mouse button and your uh, you know just moving your cursor in general so ideally you can move around the the space or the medium itself to do something third if you want to pan around you can also combine out with your middle mouse button so it's really just alt and some two keys and in general so if you want to you know move it on the side or you want to move here again all you have to do is just keep pressing your middle uh, you know just uh, press your middle mouse button while you hold out and if you want to zoom in or zoom out just um, just scroll out and scroll in that's pretty much it so if you combine these tricks now you can just you know move around rotate uh, whichever you uh, area you want to see and pan if you want to move somewhere cool now you have tho those uh, navigations so it's basically just a combination between middle mouse button and your left mouse button as you can see now we can do a lot of things you can zoom in zoom out so yeah so next we'll be showing you guys how to uh, how to start or how to start the cube or anything like that so as you can see, we already have some primitive objects in place. If you guys want to uh, start something using a primitive objects, as we usually do start in 3D, we usually start in primitive objects. So either we start from a plane, or we start from a cube. It's really up to you. So next thing we're going to do is also to showcase you guys some menus. So if you hold uh, right click, now you have this uh, menu right but it's quite limited and we really can't do a lot about it but if uh, if you hold uh, shift and left uh, not left click sorry uh, right right click if you hold right click you see this menu but if you combine it with shift right click so hold shift and right click you can see this wonderful menu right here and it will allow you to either spawn one of these objects uh, create a polygon tool so as long as you keep holding shift and your uh, right mouse button you can just uh, choose whichever you want but if you end up liking something you just have to stop clicking uh, both uh, your right mouse button and your shift so now you have something that is wonderful now if you want so if you go back again hold shift and right click uh, we spawn a cylinder right but we want to get rid of the scale, uh, the, the scaling mode as we see it here. So to do that, you can press W to go back to selection mode. So selection mode is this tool right here. So if you, if you uh, if you press Q or W, it goes back to that. Or it goes if you want to press W, it goes to the uh, arrow keys, which you can move around. So if you want to press E, uh, you can also try to rotate the object however you like if you press R you can rescale it so R is for rescaling 
as a, as I said, and E is for rotation. So you can rotate the object whichever ways you want. And W is the axis uh, or the pivot uh, itself that you can move it somewhere however you like to move your things. Cool. So the next thing that I'll be showing you guys is if you hold shift and right click at the same time but not, uh, not, uh, not putting your cursor in the object or maybe outside the cursor or I mean outside the object, uh, you will be shown a different menu. So in this case, uh, hmm. actually it's the same menu. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. So let's say uh, you want to modify this model. So if you press multi-cut, you can, you are now at the, uh, you, you know, your object turns blue. That means you know you can modify the object so when the object is color green you cannot modify the object so if you want to stop modifying the object if you want to stop that you just have to click shift and right click and uh, not really sorry about the sorry about that not shift right click uh, you just have to press your right click and you will be shown a menu in which uh, mode you want to choose so if you want to select edge the edges alone uh, you can also do that. So as you can, as you notice, I just have wait. It's not doing anything. That's because I have the, uh, I have the multi cut turned on. So if I wanna stop using the multi cut, I would have to press W or Q to stop doing that. So in this case, I'm gonna stop uh, pressing it using W. So as you can see, I'm still in editing mode. So if I wanna go to selection mode, I just have to. Uh, select that way there's no difference really but uh, ideally W is for pivot so now I can go back to object mode so as you can see I can move around and now it's color green because I can't edit it anymore so if you want to go back to your edit mode you just have to select the object and now you just want to hold control and uh, right click uh, right mouse click and then you can choose how you, however you want to modify the object so in this case I want to use the multi-cut tool and I can also hold control and it will give me this option to uh, create an edge loop. Great. So if you want to, uh, if you want to finalize an edge loop somewhere, all you have to do is just left click mouse button holding shift. Otherwise, if you don't, if you stop holding shift, uh, the selection will be gone as, as simple as that. So if you want to keep the uh, selection intact, just press left mouse button and it will do the selection for you, which is pretty simple. So if I hold control again uh, and try to do selection and click, uh, and all you have to do is click left mouse button again, it will finalize the selection. Now, if I want to exit the edit mode, I all I have to do is basically just go uh, on your right mouse button, you know, select select right mouse button, just keep holding it and press object mode and then let go. So there you go. So now you see I'm still on the the multi-cut tool. All you have to do is just press W or, you know, like I said, uh, Q and it will go back to pivot. Great. So if I go back here in faces, I can now select whichever face I want here. Now I can also select any face I want. So I'll, I'll show you a bunch of tricks. So now we are in number two. So today we're going to be showing you now is the selection tricks. So I'll be showing you guys how you could uh, select your um, faces, select any edges, or vertices or however you want to select it faster quicker than ever before because it's really important when you're 3d modeling is that you select as fast as possible and to work qu as quickly as possible so that you can model as fast as possible it's all about the speed and it's all about the time limit and also delivering a certain quality so if you go back now we're at selection uh, tricks so I'll be showing you guys a bunch of selections so all you have to do is uh, firstly uh, for this first trick, I'll be showing you guys is you just have to select the first face 
and you have to hold shift while you're doing it and select the other one. Uh, not just select it by default, but double clicking it. So if you double click it, as you notice, uh, it selects the whole edge loop. So it's the same uh, principle for selecting an edge. So say if I want to select an edge and I want the whole edge loop, so all I have to do is again, go to edge mode right here. So if I click my right click button, and I'll hold right click and then go to edge, now I can uh, select my edges. So if I want to go select each and every single vertice, I can just hold right click and then uh, go to vertex mode. And then now you can select each and every single vertex. Now I'm going to go back to my edge mode here. I can go ahead and first right click this one and then hold shift. Then after that, double click the next edge beside it. Not the, you know, not the next one to it, not the, the other one, but just making sure that it's always the next one to it. So double click that. And now it selects the whole edge loop, which is great. Now you can do other selections too. A much more controlled selection would be selecting this first one and hold control shift, uh, sorry, holding shift alone and double clicking the other one. So if you do that, you're only limited to where the last location is. So say example, if you wanna select this and you wanna select all of it until this area. So all you have to do is just basically hold shift and double click the last edge that you wanna select. And there you go, it selects the whole uh, loop just partially. Great, now we have that done. Now I'll show you guys another trick. So it's the same thing for, you know, if I go back to right mouse click or uh, hold right mouse uh, button, if I go back to vertices, it's the same thing. If I want uh, to uh, select the whole, ed, uh, the whole vertex loop, uh, all I have to do is just select one and then hold shift and double click the other one. And then now you select the whole thing. So it's the same thing. Uh, it's the same principle for everything. So I go back to edge mode, there you go. Okay, so that is the selection trick. Uh, the beauty about this is the selection trick can be for anything at all. So if you go to faces, like I said, it works on faces, it works on vertices, it works on edges. All you have to do is just, when you select a face, select the, the and hold shift and then select the last one that you want us, uh, uh, to guide through, then there you go. It basically selects a whole chunk of it. But if you want to select the whole loop without uh, selecting each and every single face of around the loop, you just all you have to do is basically just select uh, the first one and then hold shift again and double click the other one right next to it. And it's the same principle. Great. I hope you guys understand that. Um, and next, we will be proceeding to our extrusion tricks. So I'll be showing you guys ways that you can extrude your models and you can navigate around the object that, you know, to make your navigation a lot more faster and a lot more quicker. So in this case, I'll be showing you guys how to select these objects a lot, you know, aside selecting the objects, extrude the objects a lot faster, quicker, and without having to navigate around the uh, around Maya that much using just hotkeys. Cool. So it's really important that you guys would memorize this because you know you will be using this constantly and it would be a better habit that you guys will use this pretty often. So let's go back to extrusion tricks. So for extrusion tricks, I always comes with the selection tricks, right? So if you want to, you know, extrude something, you always have to make sure that you also have your selection tricks too. So like I said before, I taught you how to select uh, a whole edge loop using just shift and then double clicking and it basically, you know, shift again and double clicking the other side. It's the same thing. So now let's double click one side right here in the middle. But I also want to extrude it. So there are two ways to extrude it. Number one is to extrude it using scaling. So if I go ahead and press 
uh, R for uh, scale. So if I press R, it becomes the scale button. Now, if I hold shift, basically, as you notice, while, you know, I'm, I'm currently on the scale mode. And if I hold shift while I'm on scale mode, I can extrude. So if you keep just, if you just keep pressing shift all the time, while dragging this middle uh, button that you have here in the pivot point, and if you drag that, as you notice, now I can extrude properly. You can also scale that down if you want to. So that's that. Now there's also other ways that you can extrude. You know, the beauty about this extrusion though is that no matter how you're extruding it, you can always extrude it faster because all you have to do is press shift while you're in scale mode and you can keep pressing shift while, you know, you can just constantly extrude it, extrude it, and keeps adding more face on top of each other. So it's pretty easy as that. So once again, hold shift and then hold right click and then just drag it like like how you usually scale it the reason why that i use the middle one over one axis or over the red axis because if you just select one axis it basically deforms uh based on that direction which is not what we want so we want uh, an equal balance of both so as you notice if i also hold control and hold right click it's the same reason so to you know to have 50 percent both of the axes uh value uh, to have a perfect shape you would need the value of an x uh, the z and the uh x uh, y and x axes but if in other in other engines it's z and x axes but in this case that's pretty much for extrusion now I'll show you for, um, other uh, tricks that you can use extrusion with. So say example, you wanna extrude the whole thing right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, do a quick selection by selecting one face again, like I said earlier, and holding shift while double clicking the other, uh, or you know, do double clicking the other face on the other, um, beside it not this one otherwise you're just limited to that double clicking each uh, each of either the sides so you're e either of them because like i said earlier if you're going to select just one face in here it's and double clicking that it's just going to follow whichever direction you select it and just that specific edge loop alone so if you want to select the whole edge loop again just select that hold shift double click and then there you go so I've explained that many times, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and press Control E. Uh, no, not Control E, my bad. Uh, Shift E. Oh no, yeah, it is Control E. Damn, sorry, my bad, okay. So Control E, so if you press Control E, you will be popped out with this wonderful menu. So what this menu does is that you can now select Okay, that's that, that menu is too big. Now you can select how large or how thick you wanted this piece to be. You can make it as thick as you want. You can also play with local Z axes. You can also, you know, play with uh, offset. <coughs> and you can play with thickness or Z. It's actually, I don't know what the difference between both, but ideally the Z axis is not just, you know, I'll show you a demonstration how to use thickness for other ways. There's a lot of ways you can use thickness with, not just the Z, uh, not just the local translate. Because the if you think about it, local translate Z is just taking the current vertices right now and just dragging it on the Z axis, and that's pretty much it. Thickness, however, uh, extrudes a part of the face and then basically adds on top of it, which what we don't want. So I'll show you how the thickness works on a later um, minute. So now, the beauty about this is now you can, you know, modify however you like your object to look. I can make it, you know, I can make a uh, extrusion in here. 
Now, if you want to reset the value, you just have to press Control E again, and there you go, it's reset. It. So if you press Offset, now I can uh, have another value on top of the value that I just restarted. So if I press Control E again, it resets that value, and now I just have to add another thickness. Or, a tran or translate save perhaps so it's really cool and we did that in what matter of minutes so it's really cool what you could do with just extruding alone so these you know these uh, th these wonderful things in terms of like you know th these wonderful uh, tricks would really help you out try to you know uh, make things a lot faster in terms of extrusion and basically extrude a lot faster when you're in a rush so another way that you can extrude and add pattern so let's say example I want every single face to have a hole or to uh, or to have some interesting pattern so to do that I would have to select every single face right here so say say example I'm gonna add it on this one so I'm gonna select a whole edge loop like I did before so hold uh, select one face and then double clicking the other one by holding shift as well so if I press Control E I'm back with this menu but we haven't really explored the keep faces together so what keep faces does is that even if we offset it, it still sticks together. But if you turn it off, it becomes independent face. So now it's like it's many windows or something. So you can, you know, extrude it or in inset it, you know, up to you. So if I press Control E, now I can uh, add another inset. I can also do a translate C and I can make it into what? A, interesting looking gear right so there's many things that you can do with extruding alone so let's say if you want to add another extrusion in here you just have to reset the values that you currently have by pressing ctrl e and i just have to offset it again and and basically reset that value again and then press ctrl e uh local z offset so there you go you can do a lot of things using just this So that's it guys, I hope that you learned something with the final extrusion tricks that we have. And I think that's the that's pretty much it that you're going to learn here in terms of uh, tips and tricks. Oh, and one last thing before we end this video is that I have one last uh, trick that I can show you in selection. Is that let's say you're uh, let's say you're trying to select uh, an edge loop or you're trying to select as much edges as possible but you want it quick right of course you can select one edge and hold shift and double click on the other side but let's say you want to select uh, faces that you can't really select or double click on each loop so say example this one right here like a pizza pie you can't necessarily just select this and then double click in the other one because it's basically stuck as one independent vertices, not unless if it's an edge loop like a, like a square. So to quickly select this, what I would usually do is I would uh, select tab. So as you can see, if I press tab, you notice how my cursor becomes a circle with a plus button on it. So without doing that, it, it just, it's, it's disabled. So if I hold uh, tab consistently and hold my left mouse button, I can now select one piece quickly with just holding those two things and just moving my mouse. So I can do the same thing here. I can just hold tab again and left mouse button and I can select all of these loops within a matter of seconds. So Let's do a summary with what we learned so far in selection. So we learned that we can do selection of this one right here and be a limited selection by just uh, selecting which, which one do you want selected in an 
in an edge loop. So by holding shift and left mouse click, and it just follows where it threw. But if you want to select the whole edge loop, it's basically just the shift again. Uh, sorry, uh, selecting the first face and shift again, and then double clicking the other, the next one to it. And there you go. Now, I want to select this maybe. So let's do a, a quick selection of every single face here within a few seconds. So let's go. There you go. How fast was that? So that's pretty much it in terms of selection, guys. Let me know if you guys have any comments, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.